Hey, welcome back. I'm Pastor Mike. It's great to see you online here today. We are in a series called Made for This. I want to tell you a little bit about me today. I love to fish. I love fishing. Whether it is uh, bass fishing here in New York or fly fishing in Montana with my pastor friends or deep sea fishing out in the Long Island Sound, I love being out on the water catching fish. And uh, last Saturday, my wife and I hosted the FAM Nightly News, and she asked me a question about anxiety. And uh, we began to have this conversation about anxiety and how to overcome anxiety. And it, we caught so much traction on the topic and, and what we had discussed that I want to share some information with you today about what we talked about on uh, last Saturday. I want to talk a little bit about anxiety, but I also want to build the faith message into that as well. One of the greatest acts of faith that you can perform is casting your cares upon the Lord. I'm going to say that again. One of the greatest acts of faith that you can perform is casting your cares upon the Lord. And last Saturday, Cindy asked, she's like, do you mean like casting a fishing rod? Like when you would cast a line. And I said, yes, that's exactly what we're talking about. Casting your care on the Lord. And we made this statement. You cannot catch peace until you cast your cares. You cannot catch peace until you cast your cares. You can't catch a fish with your fishing line still in the boat, right? You have to cast the line out into the water. In 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, it says this, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he might lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him or on the Lord because he cares for you. So first thing we need to realize is that God cares for you. We have have to understand that. That has to be the basis of anything that we do and interact with God. We will never cast a care to someone that we don't think cares. Right? Isn't that so hard trying to talk to somebody and and you know they don't care one iota what you're talking about while you're talking. You must believe that God cares for you, that God loves you, that he is intentional about your life. And so today I brought my boat with me. I brought some fishing gear to demonstrate some casting techniques, some casting techniques. And I know that you didn't sign up today to get a fishing lesson. I I get that. But we're going to talk about casting faith, all right? We're going to give some casting techniques of faith here. But before we do that, before we talk about our casting techniques, I want us to understand that Jesus knows where we're at. He knows the level of our faith. He knows the season of life that we're in right now. Watch this in John 16, Jesus said, I told you these things. I told you all this stuff that I just said so that in me you may have peace. Okay. You told me all these bad stories. You told me all these good stories so that I would have peace. In this world, he says, you will have trouble. I'm supposed to have peace from that? He says, in this world, you're going to have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. So the first thing that we need to look at is this, is that Jesus desires that you and I have peace. So let's pause for one second. I just want to ask you this. Is there peace in your home right now? Take a minute, take a breath. Is there peace in your hospital room right now? Is there peace at your job right now? Is there peace in your heart? That's his exact moment. Is there peace over your finances? Is there peace when you think about your children? 
Is there peace when you think about next week, next month, next year? See, Jesus desires that we have peace. One of the things that I love about fishing is getting out on a boat when the water's calm. It's peace. I go fishing a lot with a buddy of mine. His name's John. And we could sit there and fish eight hours and have said maybe ten words to each other. And it's not that we were ignoring each other. It's not that we were being mean to each other. It's that the, it was so peaceful. It was so beautiful. It was so calm that we didn't need to say anything. Each other's presence, each, the joy of watching each other catch fish, brought a peace, a tranquility to our day. How's your peace level? Jesus says, I desire that you have peace. Even in the midst of a world that you're going to experience trouble. And I got to tell you, I've had a few troubles out on the water. Okay, I've had a few troubles out on the water. One day, my dad and I had our boat out. We were up on the lake. And uh, we backed the boat into the water. And we're, we're, we're getting all the motor, you know, the motor all revved up. And we're starting to head out. And all of a sudden, we see water in the bottom of the boat. And it wasn't just a little bit of water. I mean, there was a significant amount of water in the bottom of our boat. And we're like, wondering where this water's coming from and blah, blah, and, and my dad opens the glove box and realizes he never put the drain plug back in the back of the boat. I mean, we're out in the middle of the lake and we're legitimately sinking. Our boat is sinking. We had like, the whole hole of the boat was like full of water. My dad has to jump out of the boat and we have to put the plug in the boat. And I mean, it took a while for the bilge pump to pump all that water out of the boat. We were sinking. There was trouble on the water. Two years ago, I was in Montana uh, fly fishing with a bunch of friends and the water there is, is cold. I mean, it's coming out of the Montana mountains. And we're, we're fly fishing on the Little Bighorn River. And I, w I went to step out of the boat. And when I did, I, I misstepped and I tripped. And I fell face first into this river of ice cold water. And the moment I hit the water, it took my breath away. I, I had the waders on and, and they got water and, it, and, and the, the river took me about 15 feet before I could get my feet underneath me. And then I jump up and I'm like trying to catch my breath and my guide is screaming and I had some trouble out on the water. Right? The things I love to do the most that brings me the most peace, I experienced trouble even in those moments. And those troubles that I experienced didn't stop me from coming back because I know that even though I have experienced troubles in certain moments, I find peace in the same place I can find trouble. Jesus, in this world, you're going to have some troubles. When I go fishing, though, the most common trouble that you run into is what's called a line snag. A line snag. A line snag is when you're trying to fish and you cast your line out there. And the most common one for us when we bass fish is that you're trying to cast your line very close to the shoreline. The, the bass like to hide up underneath brush and stuff. And you'll cast that line too high. You'll cast it too far, and you'll get caught up in a tree, you'll get caught up in a bush, you'll get caught up in some sticks up on the shoreline because you cast too far. Other times, you'll get a line snag underneath the water. We use crankbait sometimes, or, or we'll use uh, uh, jigs, and, and those things want to wiggle underneath the water, and sometimes you'll get snagged on a log 
or a rock that's underneath the water. You never saw that snag coming. You never saw that thing, you never saw that trouble because it was hidden underneath the water. You see, there can be some troubles, but then Jesus says, but take heart. But take heart. And that little phrase, take heart there, we don't really use that today. It just means cheer up. Cheer up. Now that's kind of hard to cheer up when you snag your lure in a tree 10 feet in the air. Because some of those lures that we use are like $17 a piece. Right? I'm telling you sometimes when your lucky lure, your favorite lure that you've been catching bass all day on gets snagged in a tree, you just about panic. You're like, oh, I got to get this, I got to get this lure back. And the greatest feeling in the world is when, when it's snagged and you just kind of give it like a quick snap back and whoop, it comes right out. I mean, that's the greatest feeling in the world is when you just pull it back and I can take cheer in that. I can take heart in that. I just gave it a quick snap and my trouble ended. My lure's back. I saved $17. Sometimes when that lure's underneath the water and I don't know what it got snagged on, I don't know what's got a hold of me. I don't know what's got a hold of my prized lure down there and I'm tugging on it. I'm doing everything I can do in my own strength and in my own power to get freed from this thing. It's not as easy to take heart. It's not as easy to cheer up when I'm still stuck on something that's got a hold of me. During the snag, the only good news I want to hear is, found your lure. That's the only good news I want to hear. Right? That's, that's it. I got you free. You are free. And that's what Jesus is kind of telling us today. He says, listen, I know you're going to experience some stuff in this life. But you're free. You're free. I already freed you. I know you're experiencing trouble, but I freed you because I overcame the world. Jesus is saying, so cheer up. Take heart in the fact that I have already overcome the world. Jesus says that he is bigger than this. He's bigger than your trouble. He's bigger than your problem. So let's take the remainder of our time here today and talk about some casting techniques. Some casting techniques. If he says, cast all your anxiety, all your cares on the Lord for he cares for you, then let's talk about some casting techniques, okay? The first casting technique that we're going to talk about is called the sustaining cast. The sustaining cast. We find this one in Psalm 55, 22. Watch this. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Woo! I love that one right there. What, what was David saying to us? What, what did he know? Because sometimes it's easy in the boat, especially in a John boat like this, when one person tries to get up and, and make a move and get around, that boat can easily get shaky on you. He says, cast your care on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. This is the sustaining cast. The word sustain means to strengthen or support physically or mentally. Whew. Scripture promises you right now that the Lord, will keep you and support you physically and mentally. If today your body is physically under attack, you're physically feeling the weight of what's happening in society, then you need to throw a sustaining cast. If your emotions and, and, and your mentality is being overwhelmed. If you're alone right now, you're feeling lonely and abandoned because of social distancing, then you need to throw a sustaining cast. And the scripture promises that he won't let you be shaken. 
He won't let you be shaken. You, you, you got you to remind the, the, yourself what the word of God says, right? So maybe you've been sick and you need a touch from the Lord, throw a sustaining cast. Let him strengthen you and support you in your time of sickness. Maybe you're worrying uh, about what's going on. Maybe you're worrying about a job. Cast some peace. Throw out that sustaining cast and pull some peace back into your life, all right? But how do you know what kind of cast you need to use? Whew. See, when, when we're out fishing, a lot of times you just do a normal standard. And this is a fly fishing rod. It's a little bit different than bass fishing. Uh, but we do an overhand cast most of the time for fishing. But if I want to get up underneath the branches, because I think that there might be a bass up on the shoreline, I may turn my arm sideways and I may do a sideways cast to get up underneath those branches so I can get my line closer to the shore. you got to know what kind of cast to throw in situations of your life. Did you know you could throw a sustaining cast? Being the pastor of a church, I'm also a business owner. I'm, I'm in charge of 24 employees. And I'm, I'll be honest with you guys. I had some time this week uh, really thinking about how this pandemic has impacted not just our church, not just ministry, global ministry, but how it's impacted our business how it's impacted the fact that we're responsible for 24 families uh, and their livelihoods. And uh, I, I was crunching numbers and I was thinking about finances and I was thinking about business and I was thinking about other people's business. And I was up to like 2.30 in the morning and I was getting myself totally overwhelmed, totally worked up, totally anxious. I was actually making myself sick, crunching numbers. I don't know if anybody else has done that. I'm, and again, I know I don't have to tell you this, uh, and, and maybe um, it's not even wise to be telling you this, but I don't really care. Um, I have to be transparent as to where I'm at and what I'm going through. Financially, I was concerned. I was looking at the bottom line. How long can, can businesses in the Hudson Valley sustain shutdowns like we're experiencing, right? And about 2.30 in the morning, yeah, I was, I was up a long time. 2.30 in the morning, I finally threw a sustaining cast. Yeah, sometimes I'm hard-headed too. I threw a sustaining cast. I was shaken. I was feeling myself getting shaken. I was, I was working myself up. And the Lord reminded me of Isaiah 43, 26. Isaiah 43, 26 says, put me to remembrance and let us plead together. I don't know if you've ever done that. I don't know if you've ever reminded God of his word. And that's not in an arrogant way. It's not in a, in, a, in a you know more than God way. He actually is telling us, put me to remembrance and let us plead together. And I said to God, God, I've dedicated my life to ministry. I, I don't have anything else but ministry. I don't have anything else but this business. God, I've been a tither my whole life since I was three years old. My dad never gave me 100% of my allowance. If I got a $5 allowance, I got four fifty, because 50 cents was automatically going to tithe, all right? I reminded him, I said, God, we're one of the most generous churches that I know. We give until it hurts. I said, Lord, there's no way that something like this can come against our church. I had to throw a sustaining cast. I had to throw it out there. I had to throw a word out there. I cast it out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I can't fix this. I can't fix this. I don't have a product to sell. I can't go produce more toilet paper and make more money. God, this is your word. And I threw a cast, a sustaining cast out there. I said, I need you to lift me up. I need you to support me. 
physically and emotionally. I don't tell you that story today because we're going to take some kind of new online offering. That's not my point at all here today. I'm saying that today to tell you this, that your concerns are my concerns. The things that scare you scare all of us. It's for real. But can we cast that care on the only one that can actually fix the situation? The second cast that we find in Scripture is called a lifting cast. A lifting cast. Proverbs 12.25 says this, Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Anxiety weighs down the heart, heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Anxiety, worry, they're heavy weights. They're heavy weights. We only use heavy weights in fishing when we're going deep sea fishing. When we're going down to the deep, dark bottom of the ocean, we'll use heavy, heavy weights. And that's what ends up happening with weights, right? They take you deep. Anxiety will weigh you down. But kind words will cheer you up. A lifting cast brings joy and it brings peace. What does a lifting cast look like? Speaking words that bring life. Simple question today, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What words are coming out of your mouth? The more you cast words of fear, the more you cast words of doubt, the more you cast words of insecurity and talking about the news and all the problems, the more weighed down you're going to be. The more words of life that you speak, the more words of joy that you speak, the more that you laugh, the lighter you are. It will bring peace and it will lift you up. That's what a lifting cast is. A lifting cast is words that you cast out that bring life to those who hear them. So what's coming out of your mouth? What are you speaking about? What kind of future are you casting out with your words today? Speak things that bring hope. Speak things that bring cheer. Speak things that bring peace. Speak things that are bringing life to those around you. And I know that's not easy. I know that's not easy today. It's not easy with so much news and media and all the stuff that's coming at us. It's easy to just regurgitate that and and give it back out. But what good news does your neighbor need to hear? What good news does your family need to hear? Right? Could you throw a lifting cast today? So maybe you're in a situation where the only thing you can do is throw a lifeline cast. You just call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says, those, those, anyone, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe today you're just crying out for a lifeline cast. Maybe today you need a Savior. Maybe you need a difference in your life today. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with all those who are watching online. Maybe, maybe everything's great for you. Maybe you're enjoying this, the time of your life. You're, you're loving having the time home with your kids. Well, we are so proud and so happy for you in this season as well. Use that same joy to help others around you. Let's pray today. Father, we come to the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your word that it will never return to you void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. Lord, we thank you for the peace of God that will reign richly in our hearts and in our minds. I speak peace 
to the family members watching this online right now, we remember that we are children of the Most High God. We thank you, Lord, for this word today, that it would bring life and liberty to those who hear it. I pray that faith rises in our hearts today. I pray for those today that they would have the boldness to throw a sustaining cast. For others who would uh, take a moment and, and throw a lifting cast to their family and just tell them how much they love their families and how proud they are of them. But Lord, those who've never thrown a line towards you yet, I pray for those who are about to throw a lifeline cast, that they would connect with a real and living God. Thank you, Lord, that you've been at the door knocking, you've been waiting for an opportunity to bring your children into a relationship with you. If you're watching online today and you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, we'd like to pray with you today. And that prayer goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you click that button that says, raise my hand that I accepted Jesus Christ today? We would love to connect with you and get you started in your walk with the Lord. Uh, as, as we continue on with online church, uh, tune in next week. We have some important information about our Easter service and how to connect with us. We love you. See you next week. Goodbye.